Hey guys, back with another video with an oscilloscope. We got some batteries. We got some test leads. We'll see how good those are. We have the meter itself and we have an instruction manual. Let's open these up. It's a pretty decent looking, not too bad. Cat 6, supposedly. They probably have a, like a name brand that these don't have on here. Little protectors on them. We'll get to that in a, those in a little bit. Look at that. Fancy, fancy bag. Well, that's what we came here for. Let's throw some batteries in this and see what it does. Let's turn it on. Let's do this all as quickly as possible to put this all together so we can get on with the name show. I'm sorry, I ruined it. Look at that screen. This is the new version with a, a higher resolution, supposedly. So the way you enter this into the oscilloscope mode is you put it to voltage AC because that's what we want and hold this R button for two seconds and it will show the oscilloscope. And then we have right here the leads and let's test it out and see what we get. Remember this is an auto ranging meter so all you have to do is put in AC or DC voltage and it will automatically detect what voltage it needs to be applied to so you can automatically see the voltage gain on the screen here. All right, so let's see if we can see the waveform. We're gonna play a frequency on this bass transducer here. We have 32 hertz set up on the laptop. We'll play that. Watch the screen. So right now, zero, 32 hertz. Wow, look at that. That is a really good sine wave. You can change right here the time scale. It gives you a little left and right. So you can zoom in on that waveform nice and clean like that. Okay, so I still have the same 32 hertz tone generated. I have right here, this is on the oscilloscope function mode and we're looking for AC voltage. This is connected to an amplifier. I'm going to turn the amplifier up to see if we can detect that clipping. So I'm turning it up. You start to see the gain. This is the gain knob that I'm turning. It's going to go up. Nice waveform. Oh, started to clip. See that? This is clipping right here. This bottom line where it's flat, that's the clip. So, for all intents and purposes, this is your rail voltage of the amplifier, which right here is 43 volts in this case. I'm gonna turn it down to where it's clean. Turn the gain down a little more. There you go, see that close up? You can see that close up right there and become nice and smooth. That is where you set your gain. Okay, so I've generated a 40 hertz test tone now. If you want to set the gain properly for your subwoofer in your car using this device, what you would do is you will play a 40 hertz test tone to the radio. You will turn it up until it distorts and then turn it down just a little bit to where it's nice and clean. And then you will then turn the gain on the amplifier until you see the clipping. And I will show you that now. I'll turn the gain up. As you can see, that's your signal increasing. And you will see the clip signal right there. Now as you can see in this demonstration, if you turn your gain up too far, that signal will clip quite a lot. In some cases, this can become a full-on sine wave, but this right here is enough to damage your woofers. Now we'll show you. We'll turn the gain down just a little bit until we get a nice clean signal. There you go, nice clean. You want to turn it up until it becomes flat right there. In our case, this will be a clean signal and that is where you will leave your gain 
you will not touch the bass boost everything will be zero on the radio this is the signal that you were looking for if you cannot reach the clipping with your gain turned all the way up and with your radio at its maximum clean you may have to go into the radio and bump the subwoofer level up or the bass level up one or two little clicks until you can get that little flat spot to clip and then you can then turn it down with the gain. So if you want to detect the distortion on the head unit or set a 4 channel amplifier you can do that as well. What you will do is you will play a 1 kilohertz test tone. I will play that now. 1k or 1000 hertz. 0 dB and then what you will do is you see it looks kind of messed up. Don't worry about that. We will go to the time scale and we'll drag this out. That's your one kilohertz frequency right there. Now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to turn the gain up and watch the clip signal. So in my case the gain is all the way up and I still have a nice clean signal. If yours begins to clip the same way as the subwoofer, then you will just simply turn it down until you get a nice clean signal, like so. So is this unit good for car stereo? Absolutely. This is one of the best units you can get for the money when it comes to car stereo. You can do all of your settings with it. You can test your DC voltage, test power at the battery, power at the amp, power at the remote wire. You can do AC, you can test your subwoofers, you can use it around the house, you can do DDA cycle or frequency, which you can just use the graphing display. You can test for continuity. If you have a short and a wire, if you want to make sure that a wire goes from place to place, just put that on continuity setting right there. Then you can just touch it and beeps. And do pretty much everything else that you want it to do as well. Very good unit. This unit was like $90 at the time of filming. It's about 100 bucks. I feel like you can't get a better graphical unit for the same price.